Good morning everybody, I'm stood outside St James's Park, home to the biggest football club in the world, that's right, Newcastle United, six times FA Cup champions, they won the precursor to the Europa League in 1969, that was called the Intercity Spurs Cup, they've won the English League four times, it should have been five in 1996, I would have loved it if that had happened, loved it, but it didn't, look, all you need to know if you don't like football, you might be sitting there and you might not like football at all, all you need to know is that Newcastle are a giant football club. But not all football clubs are giants. Such as this club here, moving on. And this club here, you probably haven't heard of them. West Auckland Town are the definition of a tiny club. Based in a small town in County Durham full of part-time players who have normal jobs such as postmen or librarians. You know, the logic is simple. Small clubs like this don't beat giant ones like Newcastle. Except that, in the 1990s, West Auckland played in the Sir Thomas Lipton Trophy, regarded by some as the first ever World Cup, and England's representative, amazingly, was this small club from a small town in County Durham. Surely, they'd fail. No. In 1909, they won it, and amazingly, and this is 100% true, in 1911, they beat Italian side Juventus to win the trophy and they didn't just beat them they destroyed Juve 6-1 in the final wow David beats Goliath as the football commentators often say we're back in our series this morning looking at the ups and downs in the life of King David last week we saw him being picked out as Israel's future king but we're not there yet though Saul is still king and we pick up the story at a point where David is serving in his army. And you've probably heard of David and Goliath. And you, you might know that it comes from a real story, history in the Bible. That's what we're looking at today from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. Here are the key points of the chapter. So there's a war going on between God's people, Israel on one hand, and the Philistines. Verse 2 says... And Saul, the king of Israel, and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with the valley between them. There's a standoff and verse 4 continues. And there came out of the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and a span. That's nine foot nine inches, by the way. He had a helmet of bronze on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. Goliath is massive. He's the definition of big man. And Goliath has a challenge for Israel, God's people. Goliath basically says to Israel, send one man to fight me. Whoever wins gets to make everyone else on the other side their servant. This is a battle for the very existence of Israel. And even though God had promised never to abandon Israel, verse 11, when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed, which means shook. They were greatly afraid. I would be, wouldn't you? In comes David. He's still a young boy. And, he, and he's actually had a job given to him by his, his old dad in verse 17. He's uh, to go and give the real soldiers, including his older brothers, some food 40 days in a row. He's, the, he's like the fast food delivery service of Israel. You could even call him Dave Liveroo. I'll get me coat. That was terrible. Patter. Sorry about that, everyone. See you later. No, let's get back to it. But young David makes a remarkable God-given observation. Verse 26, David says, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David gets what all the older men, including the king, don't. I mean, that's what we read in verses 34 to 37 just before. David fought lions, not because he was tough, but because he trusted in God to deliver him for doing the right thing. Verse 37, and David said, 
The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. And that's the key point of all of this. Not that David was little and he upset all the odds by beating Goliath with some feat of strength of his own. No, not even David claimed that. David dares to take on Goliath because he knows that God is bigger and stronger than Goliath. David knows that if he follows God, then God will do what he can't. David isn't stupid or foolhardy. He knows that if he, if he follows God here, he might not beat Goliath. In God's great plan, it could have been that David would have been killed by Goliath. There's a very similar story in another part of the Bible, in the book of Daniel, where Daniel in the lion's den goes through something very similar because both of them follow God, not expecting victory in and of themselves, but expecting God's good will to be done. All David has to do is have faith in God and then follow him. Verse 49, David put his hand in his bag and he takes out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. David did win in the end, but not because he was cleverer than Goliath, not because he was stronger than Goliath. He evidently wasn't, but because in faith, he followed God's will, whatever the cost to himself, and trusted that God's good plan would work out. David knows that if he follows God, then God will do what he can't. Often people will say to you things on, on the back of this passage like, well, you know, if you stand up to the giants in your life, you will win because you are strong. Just believe in yourself like David. Don't believe that for a second. That totally misses what God wants us to learn from this Bible passage. The greatest thing that we learn in this passage that is that God alone is strong. God alone is great. And most importantly, God never breaks his promises. God promised to always be with his people Israel. He said to Israel before even David was born this be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord, your God, who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. That's from Deuteronomy chapter 31. So if you're a Christian this morning, if you're a follower of Jesus, take great encouragement that God's promise to you is exactly the same. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus' last words to his followers were, I am always with you to the end of the age. So as we live our lives, as we go to school, or go to work, or look after the kids, or in our retirement, all of us can follow the example of David in trusting in God's good plan, no matter the situation. David versus Goliath looked like it would end in total defeat. Maybe you have a situation in your life where you think, nah, it's impossible for God to sort this out. Be like David. Trust in God. Let's pray as we finish. Father God, thank you for the true story of David versus Goliath. We pray we'd follow you in faith even when the situations in our life make it look like following you is too difficult. And help us to trust that you have our eternal good for us. Help us to recognise what David saw, that following you is always the best way to go, even when it's difficult. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to sing of God's love for us. Now we're going to sing again. <laughs> 